morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Bibles turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. beautiful day that God's gave us. And as always, we hope you've already prayed. If not, we ask to understand your prayers this morning. But if you find your place, 1 Kings chapter 19, I want to start reading at verse 8. 1 Kings chapter 19, starting at verse 8. Scripture says, And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of Israel, for the children of Israel have uh, forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abomaloah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. And we'd ask you if you would to bow your heads. Father, again, we thank you for your precious word. And Lord, uh, once again, just take us out of the way and uh, send the message out the way it needs to go out. Father, we pray that you'd try and convict where it needs to convict, yes, and Lord, yes. that you'd encourage where it needs to encourage. And again, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask these things in Christ's name. And amen. 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 God's asking, why are you here? God's asking, why are you here? He asks uh, Elijah this twice in this passage. And folks, he's asking you that today. Uh, why are you here? Yeah. Okay, some people are here uh, because they have a desire, Joe, to, to get closer to God. Yeah. Some people are here because it's just a gathering place. Some people are here because hardly it's just uh, somewhere to, to, to meet other people. Okay. But folks, listen, you've got to answer the question yeah, that's right. to God, why are you here today? Amen. Why are you here? And he asked Elisha this question twice during this passage, why are you here? Okay. Uh, what had brought Elijah to this point, okay, uh, the chapter before he had uh, fought the prophets of Baal up on Mount Carmel. Right. And uh, after this, Jezebel, Ahab's wife, had said, listen, I'll make you as one of the prophets that you slain. That's right. That's what you said. They put a bounty out on his life, yes. okay? And uh, he gets like a lot of people today, okay? He got depressed. Yeah. Yeah. He got discouraged. Yeah, that's right. And he went off. Yeah. And it said that he went to Mount Horeb, 
And before this, an angel had come and prepared him a meal and said on the strength of that meal, he went 40 days and 40 nights. So folks, listen, he hasn't ate for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay. He's weak physically. He's weak spiritually. And he's just got to the point where he's just ready to give up. And that describes so many people today in church. True. They're just ready to give up. True. Amen. And folks, listen, God's asking, why are you at this point? Why are you here? Uh, listen, Lord, I'm all alone. Garbage. We went over this last week, okay? I'm the garbage preacher, all right? <laughs> folks, don't tell me garbage like that. I'm all alone. That's garbage. Because God said that, you know what? You're not alone. You're not alone. Uh, Psalms 46, 1, I believe, said God is our, our refuge and strength, yes. a very present help in trouble. Right? Amen. Amen. Listen, that means, guess what? I don't have to call on him. Yeah. I don't have to send word. He's there. Amen. Okay. Hebrews 13, 5. It says, let your conversation or your, or your daily walk is what that's saying. Let your conversation be without covenants and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. Amen. Okay? Folks, listen. I don't care if your spouse left you. Yeah. I don't care if mommy or daddy left you. I don't care if your best friend left you. God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake Amen. thee. Amen. Amen. You either trust that or you don't. That's right. That's right. You either trust that or you don't. The end of Matthew chapter uh, 28. Okay? The last two verses in that chapter. He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. 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 Folks, listen, if you don't believe that, then I can't do anything else for you. That's right. Amen. You either trust God that, guess right. what, he's going to be there till the bitter end. That's right. Or you don't. That's right. Amen. And if you don't, you need to. Wake up. Yes. Wake up. Listen, I'm all alone. Elijah, you don't even know what being alone means. Mm -hmm. Folks, listen, you, you can look and you can say, Doug, listen, I'm all alone. Garbage. Mm -hmm. Folks, look around. You have a whole church full of people that's willing to stand by, beside you, that's willing to stand behind you, that's willing to pray for you. Yes, amen. And amen. for you to sit and say, well, listen, I'm all alone. Oh, woe is me. Okay, take your hee-haw. Yeah. <laughs> Pity party somewhere else. Because it's garbage. Yes, amen. Amen. You're not alone. Elijah wasn't alone. That's right. That's right. Listen, folks, God is there when no one else is. God is there when no one else is. Again, these two chapters, we quote them quite often, okay? And they should be in your top ten chapters of the Bible. Genesis 39. Joseph is uh, sold by his brothers into slavery. Right. He, he's taken down to Egypt. He, he's... Uh, made a slave but it says twice in that chapter but the Lord was with Joseph Amen, Amen. So it says. Right. but the Lord was with Joseph well listen my family's turned their back on me so what that's right That's right. and there are those Mary that they'll, they'll say that today listen my family's turned my back on me so what you got a better family yes Amen Amen, Amen. but if you want to take your hee haw pity party then go do that just do it outside here, okay? Listen, God's there when nobody else was. Yes. When Joseph's falsely accused, yeah. he's put into prison. But it said, but the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. Folks, listen, just because uh, hard times come on you doesn't mean that God's not there. If anything, it's the other way. Yeah. You've left him. True, true. But Genesis 39 and Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, again, okay? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I know we won't go through all this, the story. You all know it. But folks, listen. No one else was there for him, Charlie. 
They're all alone in all of Babylon. They're the only ones willing to stand up for the Lord. Well, folks, listen. If no one else is going to stand up for the Lord, guess what? Mm -hmm. He'll be there beside you. Yes. Okay, again, when they threw him in, and Nebuchadnezzar looks in and says, listen, we put three in there, right? Yeah, yeah King, we put three in. He says, listen, I see four, yeah. and they're loose yeah. and walking around, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like unto the Son of God. Right, right. Amen. Folks, listen, Christ is there when no one else is. Amen. Christ is there when no one else is. But Elijah had forgotten that. Elijah had forgotten this. He was so focused on what uh, was going on with him yeah. that he had forgot that, guess what? God's still there. Yeah, right. God's still there. Okay. Well, Elijah, why are you here? Well, Lord, I've been, uh, I've been a hard worker for you. I've been very jealous for you, Lord. Yeah. But your people have forsaken your covenant. They've torn down your altars. They've killed your prophets. And they seek my life. And even I, I'm the only one left. Folks, if you get to the point that you think you're the only one left, wake up. Yeah, right, right. Wake up. Joe, if people get to that point, they must not be going to church. Again, that's a hateful thing for the preacher to say, right? <laughs> Bless him. Folks, listen, if you think you're all alone, you must not be in church. Because if you're in church, guess what? You find out you're not alone. Right, that's right. If you're in church, guess what? You find out that other people have problems too. Yeah, that's right. When we took up prayer requests this morning, Mary, there wasn't just one request, there were many. Yes, that's right. You know what that means? Guess what, folks? Everybody's in the same boat. Yes, that's right. Everybody's in the same boat. Everybody needs the Lord. But when you get to this point like Elijah, you just want to feel sorry for yourself. And folks, that's sad when you get to that. You just want to feel sorry for yourself. Right. I'm all alone, Lord. This is hard. This is hard. Folks, if you only figured this out by now, we don't preach the health and wealth gospel. You know why, Sandy? Because there is no such thing. There is no such thing. There, there are those that will, Jessica, they'll preach that, listen, you come to God and everything's going to be all rosy and uh, you're never going to have a want or need or hurt again. Folks, no. That's right. That's right. No. That's completely contrary to what the Word of God says. Right. Right. Matthew chapter 5, around verse 10. Uh, it says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Right. He says, Rejoice yeah. and be exceeding glad. Yeah. For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Right, right. Now, Elijah can look and he can say, listen, Lord, I'm the only one and they, they, they put a bounty on my head. And listen, I, I did everything you've asked and I'm all alone. <laughs> Folks, he wasn't alone. That's right. Amen. And Becky, if God would have been a little more like Doug, boy, that's a scary thought, ain't it? <laughs> He just said, listen, Elijah, they rejected Noah, they rejected Moses, they rejected Samuel, so where do you get off thinking that you're so special that you're all alone? Right. right. Amen. Amen. Amen or out. Amen. Listen, folks, what makes you so special that you think that you're all alone? Right, right. That you're not going to have to suffer anything. He said, blessed are you when they do this. When they persecute you, when they revile you, when they say all their people against you falsely for my name's sake. Well, listen, Doug, they called me a liar. Well, have you been lying? Uh, you, you've lost the argument. Well, they called me an adulterer. Well, have you been adultering? Then you've lost the argument. 
Well, they call me a thief. Have you been stealing? Then you've lost the argument. Well, the preacher called me lazy. Bless him. Have you been lazy? Bless him. Then you've lost the argument. Folks, listen. Elijah done lost the argument. Why are you doing? Why, why are you here, Elijah? I'm all alone. It's getting hard. Folks, guess what? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes. But out of them all, the Lord delivereth him. Yes. Amen. Out of them all. That's right. The Amen. Lord delivereth him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, around verse 14. He says, But and if ye suffer for righteousness, happy are ye. Be not afraid, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always. Be ready always. Not just when times are good, you go spread my name. Not when everything's all rosy, you go, and, Oh, I'm a Christian, come out the church. But be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh the reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of an evildoer, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing yes. than evil doing. Right. Right. It is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well doing than evil doing. Folks, listen, you commit a crime yeah. and they throw you in jail, yeah. again, stop whining. Yeah, that's right. Amen. If you're guilty and you've did the crime, then do the time. Yes. And Mike, it's the same way with God. But people get real edgy when the preacher starts talking like that. Listen, you. when you've did the crime, yeah. Stop whining. Yeah. Accept the punishment. That's right. Amen. But listen, Doug, you don't understand. I'm just like Elijah. I've been a hard worker. I've been faithful. I've did all this. And things are still hard. Folks, there's a reason they call this earth and not heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Blessing. Amen. We got to dumb this down, Mary. <laughs> Because people don't understand this. Listen, folks, this isn't heaven. That's right. That's right. This is where we uh, find the path to heaven. That's right. Amen. But where? Why are you here, Elijah? Why are you here? And it said that uh, there was a fire and an earthquake and a great wind. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And you know what? God wasn't in any of that. Right. But it said that then there was a still small voice. Right. Folks, listen. If you're in that much doubt, okay, there's not going to be a neon sign flashing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Right. They're not going to fly the blimp over the uh, football game and say, here's the answer, Sandy. <laughs> you want to know what the answer is? Yeah. Right here. That's right. Amen. When you get back to God's Word. And that's what Elijah forgot. Listen. He had to get back to God's word to find the answer. And the answer wasn't in the, the big things. The answer wasn't in the fire or the earthquake or the wind. The answer was, guess what, in the still small voice. Yeah. Folks, there are people that they've stopped listening to the still small True. voice. True. And that's why they're like Elijah are. They want to hide in a cave. We, we, we almost titled this message, Why Are You Hiding? And that's probably more accurate. Because, Joe, guess what? There's a lot of people hiding. True. Amen. They're hiding at the house. Yes. They're hiding uh, out with their friends wherever. Okay? And, folks, again, if you're, do so if you're doing something that you couldn't do at 2 o'clock in the middle of the day in front of Grandma, wake up. Yeah. That's right. Wake up. What well, stupid True. people are they? Amen. True. You shouldn't call people stupid. Listen, folks. <laughs> if you're that willing to do stuff and you know what you're doing is wrong, we 
may as well go James 4, 17 too, since uh -huh. it's done been quoted, right? <laughs> to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. Amen. Well, Elijah hadn't done anything wrong. He knew to do good, Harley. That's right. He knew not to just give up and go hide in a cave. That's right. Listen, folks, there are people that they went and they, Jessica, they're hiding in a cave today. Listen, things are hard. That's life. Yes, amen. That's life. Amen. But why are you here, Elijah? And after the still small voice comes, guess what? The question's asked again, Sandy. Why are you here? Okay. Not physically here. And folks, listen. It doesn't matter whether you're sitting in the seat this morning. Yeah. But where are you Yes, amen. Here. Amen. amen. Where are you here? Listen, you can come and you can sit on the seat. Yeah. That does nothing. That's right. Amen. That just means, guess what? You're here instead of Walmart. Yeah. You're here instead of McDonald's. You're here instead of wherever. But folks, listen, yeah. where are you here? Right. That's the question that you got to ask today. Listen, where are you here? And where Elijah was here, guess what? Wasn't a good place. Yeah. And folks, when, when you start just going into this eternal petty party, feeling sorry for yourself, it's not going to be a good place. That's right. It's not going to be a good place. But where are you? Where are you today? Well, I'm all alone, Lord. Well, as Billy and Danny sang, help's on the way. Amen. Help is on the way. Okay. Uh, Matthew eighteen twenty. He says, "But where two or three are gathered together in my name, right? That's right. Not where two or three are gathered right. together. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, that's right. There am I in the midst of them. Amen. Folks, there was three in the fiery furnace, and yes. guess what? He yeah. was in the midst of. Them. That's right. Amen. There were two, and Bill referenced this this morning." that come back from spying out Canaan. Yep. And there were 10 that said, oh, <laughs> can't do it. Yep. Folks, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of. Listen, there are more than two or three here today yes. that are gathered in his name. Yep. And you know what he says? He says, I'm in the midst. Amen. I'm in the midst. But folks, listen, help is on the way. Well, Doug, again, I didn't see the big flashing billboard. I didn't see the neon sign. I didn't get the text message. Danny, that's sad. God has to, God, God almost has to text people. He's got to put a message on Facebook to get their attention. True. Today. True. No, amen or ouch. Amen. True. But folks, listen, help is on the way. Second Timothy chapter four at verse sixteen. The Apostle Paul talking. He says, At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. Yeah. I pray God that it not be laid to their charge. Nevertheless, the Lord stood with me yes. and strengthened me. Amen. That by me the preaching might be fully known and that the Gentiles might believe, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but out of them all, the Lord delivers. Folks, listen. The Apostle Paul said, listen, when I became a Christian, guess what? Nobody stood with me. That's right. That's Nobody true. stood with me. Mike, all, all the disciples and the yeah. Christians in the early church were scared to death. Yes. yes. Just the week before, just days before, right. he had come to haul them away to be killed, to be That's thrown right. in prison. Yeah. They didn't trust him. That's right. All of the Jews, yeah. Sandy, yeah. that had gave him this authority, they didn't trust him anymore because, listen, now you've turned your backs on us. That's right. Folks, listen, you think you're all alone. Guess what? Paul was literally all alone. Yes, amen. But he said, nevertheless, the Lord stood with amen. me. Amen. And strengthened me. Yes. Folks, help's on the way, but you got to know who to call. Amen. Listen, if you're going through a rough time, don't call these other idiots that you're hanging around with. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. 
Amen. Sure. Bill, I hate to be this hateful this morning, but it's true. let's just be blunt. That's right. It's true. Folks, if you're in a bad shape, why are you going to call on other idiots that are doing the same thing? Right. That's right. Do you really think that that's going to solve the problem? No. And that was the problem. Instead of uh, calling on God, yes. Elijah just says, well, listen, I just give up. Mm -hmm. I give up. But he said, help's on the way. Listen, you go and you anoint Hazel, king of Syria, and you anoint Jehu, yeah. king of Israel. Yeah. And you go and you find Elisha, and he's going to be taken over for you. Folks, listen, help is always on the way. you got to know who to call. Yes. you got to know who to call. And he said, besides all that, guess what? I have 7,000 yes. in Israel that have not bowed their knee to Baal. Right, right. Nor kissed him with their mouth. Yeah. Folks, listen, don't think that you're the only Christian there is. Don't think that you're the only one going through hard times. He has a remnant. To help you get through it. He has a remnant to help you get through it. You see a lot of similarities between Elijah and Moses. Yeah. They both go to Mount Horeb yeah. at different times. Okay? Exodus chapter 3, Moses goes to Horeb to seek God. In this chapter, Elijah goes to Horeb back in because God's seeking him. But they both find God on the mountain. Yeah, right. And folks, listen. There's special things that happen when you're on the mountain. There's special things that happen when you're on the mountain. Again, when Moses goes back to get the, the Ten Commandments after the first ones were broken, it said that uh, Exodus 34, 28, that he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. You all haven't forgot the first verse that we read today, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what he said. He said that he had went 40 days, Joe, and 40 nights on the strength of that last meal that right. the angel had gave. They both go to the mountain, and guess what? They find God's word to yeah. take back. Right. They come down from the mountain. You know who's the first person Moses sees when he comes down from Sinai? Joshua. That's right. You know who's the first person that Elijah finds after he comes down from the mountain? Elisha. Right. Folks, listen. Help's on the way. Amen. Help's on the way. But you got to decide which case you're in today. Either you're seeking God today or God's seeking you. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Amen. Okay? Yes. Either you're seeking God today or God's seeking you. Right. Moses was seeking God. God was seeking Elijah. He knew he was hurt. He, he knew he was discouraged. And folks, listen, when you go hide in the cave, when you go hide at the house, when you go hide wherever, you're not going to find God's word. Right, right. You've got to come to the holy mount. Okay? And I don't mean Pinch Ridge. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean the mount of God. When you ascend them, and that's what Horeb, that's what it means, is the Mount of God, folks. When you come to the Mount of God, guess what? You find strength. Yes. You find encouragement. You find reinforcement. But if you just go on your own and go hide, you're not going to find any of that. Right, right. You're not going to find any of that. But, folks, God's asking today, why are you here? Folks, why are you here? You're the only one that can answer that. That's right. Amen. The preacher can't answer it. No. Mommy and daddy can't answer. No. Your friends can't answer. Right. Only you can answer that today. Folks, why are you here? God's asking today, why are you here? Amen. Danny, come and give us a song. Yes, <laughs> Folks, if you have a need today, we'd ask you to come. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, we'd ask you to come. So as they get a song for everybody to stand.
Troublesome times are here, fill his heart with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, thou is that say. Open your heart to God, save from the trasting rock. Seek the way, pilgrims trod, Christians away. Jesus is coming, Jesus coming soon. Mine's free. Uh, announcements. Uh, as soon as we dismiss, go home and uh, get your food. Go down to Coonskin. The church picnic will be down there at uh, the Riverside Pavilion. Okay, that's the. As soon as you pass the pond, right on the right. Okay, there's a sign there, but uh, everybody come out and enjoy the, the afternoon. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the fellowship. There will be no service tonight, okay? We will be laying over service tonight, so there won't be service tonight. Again, everybody come out, have a good time today. Uh, Wednesday night, there will be prayer meeting, children's church and youth group, so remember that. And July 17th, we'll be starting Bible school. So uh, get an early start on praying, get an early start on inviting people out. But July 17th, that week, we'll be having Bible school. Any other announcements? And yeah, hope to see everybody down at the picnic. If nothing else. Mike, dismiss the floor. Thank you. 